Yeah. Well, I was talking about the batch size right. issue, and um, and it's interesting. The 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 original work done on what is optimum batch size was done in 1913. It's 104 wow. years old and things wow. like that. And at the time, the guy who was writing about it, a manufacturing guy, he said most engineers do not understand the economics of batch size, and now. It's 104 years later and things like that, or 103 years later, and most engineers still do not understand the economics of batch size. <laughs> and the, the way I, and, and actually, in lean manufacturing, they have a very simplistic view uh, of that. I mean, they, they say lot size one is the right answer. Mm -hmm. And when it, whenever a lean manufacturing person tells me lot size one is the right answer, you say, okay, so now why is it in a packet switching network we do not put one byte of data in every packet? And then, well, it's the overhead. He says, yes, yeah, there is a trade-off with overhead. Okay. So in, in batch size, you're always making a trade-off between transaction cost and holding cost. Mm -hmm. the, the example I was giving in the course, it's an easy one to remember, is, Let's say I ate eggs for breakfast in my family, and I decided that uh, we go to the supermarket too often, so what I want to do is I want to buy my eggs in large batch size. So okay. I'm going to buy one year's worth of eggs in a single trip to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. And I, I would do that, and I would minimize the number of trips I take to the supermarket, but I would have to buy an extra refrigerator, I'd have to have money invested, I have a lot of spoilage cost. And so my holding cost would become very high and my transaction cost would be very low. Yeah. Now, eventually I would figure out this is a stupid way to do things and I would say, I should Google this and find out uh, what a smart way to do it. And I'd run across the lean manufacturing ideas and I would read about one piece flow is the answer to all of your problems. Let's buy one egg only. So, yeah, exactly. As I, I would say, I should really use this new thinking from lean manufacturing. From now on in our kitchen, we eat an egg, we buy an egg, we eat an yeah. egg, we buy an egg. I only need storage space for one egg in my refrigerator, mm -hmm. so my holding cost is extremely low, but my transaction cost becomes very high because I have to go to the supermarket several times per day. And that, catch it, it is always an economic trade-off. The numbers for your holding cost, the numbers for your transaction cost end up affecting what the optimum batch size is. And I think the great success story in the software industry has been what we have done with test automation, where we have taken transaction cost and reduced them by probably five or six orders of magnitude and as a result, we have enabled extremely small batch sizes in coding and testing. And you look at how we would do testing, you know, 40 years ago in software and things like that. It was a, tied to the waterfall model, big batch, touch, very delayed feedback loops. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, there are a lot of people who are just getting continuous uh, feedback on their code. They can check it in whenever it becomes available and get feedback results on it extremely quickly. Yeah. And it makes life a whole lot better. It does, it does.